All right, as we prepare to enter our first drill module in the course, let's keep in mind the big picture of what's going on. So we've looked at, we've organized the entire course around all these kinds of bubbles. What we're going to do in the content that leads up to the first exam is bounce back and forth a little bit about uh, how we define forces and looking at some free body diagrams. And we'll do that in 2D in a simple kind of way. We'll apply those ideas to equilibrium of real bodies and then we'll come back as we deal with systems that don't work so well in the simple way to find some a few more things and we'll come back and then apply equilibrium and that will set us up for the first exam. So this first little mini module has two lessons. It's about the definitions of forces and our way that we think about them. You see the lesson objectives here in this first lesson of this two lesson sequence, some text references there, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to be mostly focused on this notion of forces as vectors. Um, you know about vectors from physics and we'll be doing some things over again, uh, but applying it to our unique situation. We'll need eventually law of sines, law of cosines uh, to help us out with this modeling and the analysis using those models. And keep in mind that forces are either action or in reaction to something. And we talked before about how a force tends to want to cause a body to displace or deform. Uh, whether we include that displacement or deformation is not really a part of what we typically do in the statics course as for other courses. We, ca we call them rigid bodies. They're not really rigid. They're just simply a body. These things that uh, try to cause them to displace or deform are the applied forces. The reactions are things that are in response to the to the action forces, they can be internal or external. And as we get into uh, these systems later on in the, the next modules, you'll see exactly what we're talking about there. All right, so let's let's kind of get this context of, of forces here in the mathematical representation. This is a three-dimensional situation, simple little situation where a car is being hoisted on a crane. And so we've got this obvious thing that up here at the top, the total net cable force would have to be, of course, equal to the weight of the car. But then we have all these little suspender cables that come down to this harness. They're coming in three dimensions at all different kinds of angles. And they're, even though they're caused by the external weight of this vehicle, the internal forces will not be all just downwards. This example that we have down here below is a part of the roof system of the oval in Kearns, Utah. That's a speed skating oval that has two ice rinks plus then the large oval uh, uh, ice sheet that goes around it. And this is a part of a roof system that this portion is really just in two dimensions, the vertical plane. We've cut away this little small piece of it in representing it in a free body diagram where the effects of each of these structural members that are cut away as they in influence or act upon the joint are shown here. These would be internal forces that are developed in response to other forces that are applied to the system. They all have different directions even though they're within one plane. And that leads us here to those three basic properties of vectors. They have to have a direction and they have to have magnitude. That difference between a scalar and a um, a vector is that particularly that direction in terms of physical space usually we think about vectors that represent some sort of physical kind of quantity. Um, energy is known as a scalar. It does have a sign plus or minus whether the energy is increasing or decreasing and in a sense has a direction of how it flows but that's a little bit different in the sense here particularly as we're going to be talking about it in this course with forces. Most people would stop with those two, direction and magnitude are the key properties of vectors, but point of application will also be crucial to us in our study of how bodies respond to forces. And if you move the point of application, you will change the effect on the rest of the structure. All right, so three basic properties. Now, we can write those forces in vector forms in three different ways. The polar form, rectangular form, and the graphical form. The rectangular form may be the most common that you're associated with. So for instance, a force written as a in vector in, in rectangular form will have an x component and a y component. 
that'd be the component form and that's also sometimes um, the other name for this is the component form of the vector representation. The polar form is something of the notion of we'll have the magnitude of the vector maybe 867 units and that would be say newtons for force in our case so that would be the magnitude and then the direction would be indicated with some sort of little less than greater than type of symbol well the way that really usually works is that the horizontal line is your reference point and then if you put your little arrow there that says I am using that horizontal line as a reference point there's the actual arrow and you would say well from that particular reference point we go 105 degrees in the direction now whether that's supposed to be plus or minus and what that means counterclockwise clockwise all depends on how you're going to set this up because you could use a vertical axis as a reference there's all kinds of ways that you could do this and so uh, you have to set that up of your notation about what you mean by that but that would be the polar form magnitude in some sort of angle the graphical form means that we are going to take say this 867 newtons force and we would draw to scale how this all would work and so I like to use my references blue not red there we go there's our x-axis and then you could get your protractor out I know that at 105 or at 90 plus another 15 so um, the true graphical form will have this measured out graphically absolutely to scale and so my little ad hoc way of doing this right now is kind of a poor approximation but you would actually measure this then completely to scale that you've chosen and so that would be 105 degrees um, measured over from the positive x axis right, so that's the basic context here and we'll charge off into a numerical example in the next video.